Alrighty guys, welcome back. Earlier we were talking about uh, Insider Indicate NFC East team is highly interested in uh, Michigan's JJ McCarthy. And then we also talked about how the Cardinals uh, are also interested in JJ McCarthy. Um, and Tate is still on his little rake right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive into our third segment. Um, this is a really cute story. Um, so if you guys uh, want to read the full story, definitely go on ESPN and read this full story because it is it's such a heartwarming, cute little story about Nick Saban's retirement. Um, but Tate's back, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't even say this holding, holding things down over holding here. Holding the that's, down, baby. That's my girl right there. That's This is why Faith is here, in breaking case of emergency. Yes. Okay, yes. I just heard a heartwarming story. Yes, I was Fill just telling in. I was telling the viewers, um, before I dive into the story, if you guys want to read the full story about Nick Saban settling into retirement, it's a really cute story on ESPN, so I definitely recommend going to ESPN and reading the full story because it is so cute. It's a cute little story. Now, this is a girl who goes to the University of Georgia. Yeah. Her I don't biggest hate, rivalry. I don't hate Nick Saban. Oh, and I, I think this article kind of melted that ice on your on your heart there a little well, bit. Well, Nick Saban doesn't coach Alabama anymore, so I got no hate <laughs> to have for him, you know? <laughs> wow. Oh, right. So, all right. So, fill me in on this article because uh, I did not read it. I, I always depend on Miss Faith on that one. <laughs> well, it's a very, very long article, so I don't think we can cover everything that was in the article. Um, but to start off, um, the stress level of former Alabama football coach Nick Saban is down exponentially these days, though there are some harrowing moments, um, like when his three-year-old grandson, James, joins him on the golf course. There's a cute little picture of him on the golf course with the grandson. Wow. So cute. Okay. Um, Saban commented on that and said, the challenge is keeping him out of the sand traps. He likes to play in the sand. That's the most stress I've had. Um, the legendary coach, uh, meticulous attention to detail and unmatched work ethic during his 17 seasons in Tuscaloosa produced six national championships, uh, 123 NFL draft picks, including 44 first rounders in a new standard in college football, but it left little time for anything else. Remember, Saban once reportedly complained about the national title game costing him a week of recruiting time. So how has Saban <laughs> adapted to his new life? It's something his closest confidence, family members, and Saban himself are still coming to grips with. When you're in a rat race like he's been, you know, you never really step away and appreciate what you've accomplished, said Alabama's head athletic trainer, Jeff Allen, the only football staff member Saban brought to the Tide, who was there for his entire tenure. You just, you just could never, because in the biz, the business, as soon as you take a breath, you're getting beat, and he wasn't going to take a breath. Not only is Saban now taking a breath, he's seeing the world outside of football. He's experiencing things he's never had in life, for in the past, he's actually relaxing, a word that previously wasn't really part of his vocabulary. The biggest change for me as a person is that I live... I lived my whole life for the last 50 years being in a hurry, Saban told ESPN. It was, hurry up to go here, hurry up to go there, don't be late for this meeting, you've got another meeting in an hour, what are you going to say to the staff, what are you going to say to the team? I mean, it was just deadline after deadline after deadline. Even when I was driving to the lake to go on vacation, I'd be in a hurry, and for what? That's just how you were built. Um, and part of this story is about his wife, Terry, who has been married. They've been married for 52 years. Um, she gave him uh, a note that said the Ten Commandments of Retirement. <laughs> Ooh, I, oh, wait a minute. I, 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 this, I'm setting up on this one here. <laughs> So, um, there was never any debate about who was in charge of Alabama's football program, but Saban had often joked that his wife of 52 years, Terry, was the family member most proficient at giving orders. The day after he retired in January, Saban said he had a note for Mrs. Terry, um, as he refers to her, sitting on his chair. It spelled out the Ten Commandments of Retirement. Terry wouldn't share all of them, but then top were the decree that Saban wait for her to sit down at the dinner table and to slow down when eating. She also told him it was polite to leave a little something on his plate when eating at restaurants. So at our first dinner at home, he brought his plate to me with half a pickle on it and said, to be polite, Terry said. Uh, another commandment calls for Saban to alter his behavior when they are settling in on the couch. For years, when Terry would get a blanket for herself, she always picked up one for Saban. 
and she said, now I'd appreciate the same courtesy. Terry has enrolled Saban in her own version of Tech 101 class. He's actually texting and reading his own emails and set his, sent his first ever email, Terry said. He even took his first trip to the pharmacy to his pick up his first email. Yeah. Wow. Sorry, I didn't mean to, that. That one, <laughs> yeah. that one threw sent me his for his first a loop. ever email. Yeah. Uh, she said he even took his first trip to the pharmacy to pick up his first prescription. He's actually quite proud of himself. <laughs> and wow. Then, Saban said, to be uh, to be clear, Saban has hardly become a homebody. He doesn't hang out watching television, though he admits he's a big fan of the show Game of Thrones. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. How, the, the, you I've have never to be a seen fan. Game of Thrones. Never seen it. Faith. And I Faith. Will never will. I will never watch. Why it. not? Because it's Why? too late now. <laughs> No, it's not. It's actually better now. Here's the reason why. None of this, none of this waiting. You got to binge to watch that. You sit I don't down. Have time. I don't have time. And just binge watch the heck out of it. I don't have time. Also, <laughs> like, I my dad really likes Game of Thrones, and um, when I went home a couple summers ago, he was watching it, and like, it's it seems good, but it doesn't really seem like something I would really like. That's because you got to get so, you got you got to there's there's a lot of development to mm, the characters. You got to so you got to start that one from the beginning. Oh, there's development in the characters. So it's like I it's not going to get good till like season 2 or season Oh three. no, no 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 breaking <laughs> no breaking bad. You and okay. this bad boy from game 1. Game from day 1, you're over there, you're watching, you're like, "Damn." By by ep by episode three, you're like holy, you know. And then by the end of the season, yeah. you're like, man, I need a drink. <laughs> you know, no, no. It's not like I game. Uh, what you call it, Breaking Bad, where I'm like three seasons into it, mm -hmm. and it's and everyone's like, oh, after you got to make it through past those first three seasons. No, you you make it through episode one, two, and three, and it's on. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. All right, keep on with anyway. Nick. Anyway. This is, it's just a cute little heartwarming story about a man who's been working basically his entire life and he's finally learning how to settle down and relax. So I understand this better than most yeah, because I, I, go, <laughs> <laughs> I go hard. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm a guy that 18, 20 hour days, mm -hmm. I'm a guy that goes hard. Mm -hmm. And after the, after the pandemic, I kind of realize I'm like, listen, mm -hmm. I, you know, I like my life. I have a, my life is awesome, mm -hmm. but I'm like, I'm going a lot and I wanted to be able to change my life. So I moved to Europe. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to change how much work I do and how much stuff I do in my life, mm -hmm. but I decided to my life to be a vacation. Right. And then I would, and I, I mean, my life is vacation and I built work into it. Mm -hmm. You know, I went hundred yards from the land, from the Atlantic ocean mm -hmm. beaches, you know, everything. When I go walk down the street, I'm in vacation world. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I walk, there's nothing to be like my dogs barking at girls in bikinis walking the past, <laughs> you know, people, you know, it's just, my life is, my life is a vacation. And I work mm -hmm. during it. Mm -hmm. So I understand why this is a big adjustment. And Nick Saban, he, even for coaches, coaches work hard. Coaches sleep at the office, sleep at mm -hmm. the stadium, uh, at the practice facility. Their, their, their life is 24-7 football. Mm -hmm. When they've won the championship, like Nick Saban was saying, like, man, this championship has cost me a week of recruiting. I need to get out there and I need mm -hmm. to be recruiting players. Mm -hmm. Nick Saban, I remember him talking about they won the national championship and he had 12, 24 hours and then he was on a flight to a home to recruit mm -hmm. people. He took tw less than 24 hours to enjoy that national championship before he was out recruiting, recruiting right. nonstop. Mm -hmm. He controlled everything. And so many play, so many coaches are that way. And I've seen interviews with a number of different coaches when that have gotten fired. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And they didn't realize like, wow, my life is actually better. And then Mm -hmm. find out like the blessing in disguise was me getting fired. Mm -hmm. You you know, um, that's once, once you're forced to step back and enjoy your life, you start to realize like, hey, I didn't have enough time with family or mm-hmm. have enough time with friends or anything else, you know? I So I, I get that. Like my, my, my friend, this is another friend, one of my, I have a laundry list of Germans that are like, <laughs> I, that I love. And he just flew in and it's just like, they know where I'm gonna be at. Mm-hmm. They know I'm gonna be here or at the beach or, over by the cliffs or something like that. Everyone knows where I'm going to be at because, you know, I built my life around that, around that. Most people don't have the luxury of that. And being in Tuscaloosa, being a football coach, that is, that's not a, that's not a job. That's a life. Mm-hmm. And now, and no one's dedicated their life more to not just coaching, but winning mm-hmm. and dominating. And yeah. that's hard when you, when your life is winning and dominating, you're always afraid someone's going to knock you off. Every everyone wants to chop your head off, like Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. you know. And so it's it's hard to be it's hard being the king, mm-hmm. and for him to step down as the king by choice, looked around the landscape and like this game is changing, not to the way I want it to be. Yeah, I've won the SEC again. Mm-hmm. It's time for me to just hit him with the deuces and bounce out. And yeah. that's what he did. And it's suggesting I love about this story. What I like best is when you are such a focused individual, making it a priority that your your partner, your spouse is so important. She's taking care of me all this time. She's giving me these 10 commandments. I got to start making adjustments in my life to make sure she comes first because she's been sacrificing so much. And that's what I see with Nick Saban is that over the years, he's always tried to make sure she was, you know, prominent in his life. Mm -hmm. And now she's saying, listen, hey, instead of you getting that blanket for yourself, it's time for you to go get me that blanket. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. you you go to you don't have an assistant that's going to be uh, writing these emails. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you got to do it yourself. Like when I first mm-hmm. moved to, I don't mean to make it just a comparison. Mm-hmm. When I moved to Europe, I wanted to make sure that I did more in my life. So I hired two personal assistants and everything to help me with my life and help me with that adjustment just because you wanted to slow your life down. Mm -hmm. And then once I got to the point where I I slowed my life down and started incorporating more things and more fun into it, then I slowly went away from from two to one. And now I just do everything uh, mostly myself with my my amazing and badass wife. So I just, Mm -hmm. it helps me with a lot of things, so. Yeah. So sweet. God, <laughs> miss. That's so sweet. Yeah. Oh, it's true. She's amazing. Yeah. She is. So, She's great. Yeah. Love her. Yeah. Uh, they said though. Um, Saban said, "I can't stand sitting around anymore now, any more than I could stand when I was coaching." He said, "I always stay busy. I think everybody looks at me. This guy's a ball coach, and that's all he does. I've got <laughs> businesses. I do speaking stuff. I got my TV job now with ESPN. I like to play golf. I've got a ton of stuff to do, so I'm not retiring to quit working." So, which I forgot that he's doing something with ESPN now. He's mm-hmm. going to be on television, um, but. Yeah. So even though he's yeah. retired, Nick Saban is still finding stuff to do. <laughs> you know what? I, as for someone who's done uh, some of the speaking engagements and things like that, actually, that, that's actually a pretty cool gig. Is it? That is. Oh, that's a that's a nice gig <laughs> there. It, it really it really is. It's 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 weird when someone pays you to talk. Like, hey, mm-hmm. you're interesting enough that we'll give you money just to say words. Yeah. Done. <laughs> I can do that in my sleep. <laughs> I do that going down the street. Absolutely. Yeah. 
<laughs> are you are you serious? Yeah. Uh, that's that's a weird that's a weird one to adjust to. Mm -hmm. Is when someone thinks you're interesting enough that they'll give you money to talk. Mm -hmm. Nice nice gig. Well, you know this this makes me like Nick Saban a little bit more. Oh, Nick Nick Nick's awesome. <laughs> sounds like a sounds like a sweet guy. This yeah. is just such a heartwarming story. So, guys, I recommend going and reading the whole story because it is so That's because he, he, he's not trying to kick George's head in. That's the yeah. reason why you're That's like, exactly okay, right. you know, yeah. I, can, I yeah. can appreciate him now. I can, yeah. Now that I've taken my beating, yep. yeah, I, can, I, can, I can appreciate this dude that's done this damage to me in life. <laughs> well, we gave him some damage, too, but... <laughs> 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 to each its own. <laughs> See, that's another debate. I'm like, you look at that record and you say not as much as uh, you think. The past few years. <laughs> past few uh, years. Anyway. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to dive into our oddities of the day. So make sure you guys stick around and we'll be back in a few.